Okay, so now we've come to uh, the main uh, uh, portion of our program. Uh, unless anybody else has another announcement, anything they need to burning desire, they need to talk about. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, I guess uh, anybody who's, being, who's here has already received uh, a number of communications about this topic in our evening. So again, I'm not going to belabor the. Uh, the uh, value of our evening, and we're just going to get to it. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Susanna Mendoza, the Chicago City Clerk. Good evening. I have a tough crowd to follow here. So uh, anyway, good evening. Uh, my name is Susanna Mendoza. I want to start by saying thank you to all of you for being here tonight. I know some of you came from very far uh, to the greatest city the world. <laughs> and uh, I was telling Carl that uh, I know it's not winter yet, but you know people go, oh, it's too cold to live in Chicago. And I say, if you can't hack the winter here, then you don't deserve to live in this great city. So that's kind of my take on this city is awesome. But in any event, I am the city clerk. Uh, it's one of three elected citywide positions here in the city. We've got the mayor, the clerk, and the treasurer. And I took office uh, at the same time, a little bit, I think, before Brett actually got sworn in. But um, I, was, I started in uh, May of 2011 as well. So I'm in my first term as city clerk. Prior to being clerk, I was in the state legislature for 11 years. So I kind of started out a little bit early, but I, I feel that I've gotten a great deal of, uh, of uh, experience in the process, which brings me to where I am today. But, but before I even get going, I would like to thank Carl Malibu for including us in this conversation and for reaching out to my office. I mean, we wouldn't be here if you guys hadn't made the first step, so I really appreciate that. And uh, really, your support and partnership is so appreciated uh, from my perspective. It's uh, a lot of fun for us to get started on what I think is a really cool project that cities in particular haven't really been quick to want to be a part of. So I'm happy that that's changing, at least starting here in Chicago. So since the start of my career, I've been passionate, very passionate about open government and about how technology can work for us. Um, it's important in order to be able to achieve greater transparency. And though I started my career, as I mentioned, as a state legislator uh, elected to the House of Representatives here in Illinois, my passion for this topic in particular has only grown since taking, the, taking on the new role of uh, Chicago City Clerk. That's because it's all the more relevant in an office that's responsible for one of the most complicated and extensive municipal documents you'll find not only in the country, but frankly in the world, the city of Chicago's municipal code. So for those of you who like actually get your kicks from scraping info, there's a lot of kicks to be had, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, not only does the clerk's office publish and maintain that complex evolving document, but we also play a critical role in facilitating the legislative process and warehousing the outcomes from all of the hearings and the committees that city council proceedings um, have every single month. Uh, for example, this month, in the month of November, we have three council meetings. That's not usual, it's usually once a month, but during budget season, I mean, there's so much going on, and in November, I think we have at least three that we have scheduled so far. So the clerk's office is the official record keeper for the city of Chicago, and as you can imagine, that is by no means any small feat. So my office wants to open up this trove of municipal data and turn it into a useful tool for every Chicagoan, be it a community activist, scholar, or even your neighbor down the block. And I should probably hate to say, but nonetheless, a member of the media, right? Like, it shouldn't be difficult to access information. I want our municipal code and all of our offices, other services, to be as open, and transparent, and, and accessible as they can be. You may have noticed that many elected officials are averse to reaching out to the public, and they're very hesitant to create partnerships with not-for-profits or the private sector. <coughs> the reason for this is, frankly, that some government institutions just won't hold up to the scrutiny. Uh, they fear the kind of constructive criticism that results from an educated, intelligent analysis. And while I'd like to think that we have some amazing staff, which we do, I have people like John Fred, who's my CTO, the first CTO we've ever had in the city of Chicago in the clerk's office, uh, Julia Ellis, who's legal counsel, but actually serves in like a million different uh, hats, Pat Corcoran on my staff, like you name it, everybody that I've brought in, I'm very, very proud of and is so intelligent, but we can't do it all ourselves. Like we really have to have a reliance and a faith in partners, whether they be sister agencies or folks like yourselves that actually are really into this and are passionate about it. 
So, you know, that's why I'm here today. I mean, I think uh, Commissioner Brenna Berman, is she here? I saw her earlier. But she is awesome, and she's, you know, new as a CIO here in uh, Chicago, but it's been a pleasure to work with her as well. So I think we're, we're in a really good and special time right now in the city in terms of new leadership uh, from the mayor's office on down, and I think that we all kind of buy into the same ideology that's important to bring government uh, to a real, true, transparent uh, realm. So, um, you know, when people fear intelligent criticism and educated criticism, you know, that's a problem. And it's really the it's the antithesis to the type of progress that I want for our office and that I wish for. So I do want to take government in a new direction. And fostering these new kinds of relationships is really critical to be able to accomplish that. So that's why I'm here today, in this room that's full of innovators, technologists, policy and information wonks. Uh, with your creative spark and ingenuity, I, I really truly believe that we can find ways to make the complex mechanisms of Chicago city government accessible and most importantly useful to its citizens. You know, when I was running for office, I talked about having an easier ability to, to navigate a website, something that simple, right? And um, you know, we have very limited resources as a city government to be able to transform our technology, but you know, when it is easier to decipher the Da Vinci Code than it is to like find an ordinance that your alderman introduced, that's a problem, right? It shouldn't be that way. And I think, in a way, government has actually wanted it, it to be difficult for the public to have access to the information uh, that affects their everyday life. So that was a big motivating factor for me to run for this position so that you can have easy access and simple access through technology to your government. My mom, who hates computers, she's 78, she should have an easy time figuring out what's happening on her block, should she choose to know. You shouldn't have to have a computer science degree to be able to access that information. So those are things that we want to change. And so I do want to take this opportunity to invite every single one of you to take a look at what we do. Think outside the box. And most importantly, run with it. Hack at it. <coughs> Seriously, hack at it, please. Like, you're not going to get a no from me. And uh, I want you to think about how this information can be utilized for everyone's benefit and interests. We want to work with you. We want to work together with you as a community to improve services for every Chicagoan that I represent. So we have a lot of folks who I think need this type of information. As I said, we can't do it no matter how much great brain power we have in our very, you know, relatively, it's the second largest office in the city, but nonetheless, it's still small compared to all the information that we have to be responsible for. So we do need your help, and we encourage you to be a part of that. So I want my office to be a, a part of this very vital movement towards open government. I'm super happy that you've made the trip here today, and I want you to know that I feel that I'm in great company to be able to accomplish this feat. So I'm very appreciative of the work that's being done by the other fellow speakers. This was pretty cool, and I'd like to um, sign up for, what is it, ask, what was it again? Ask them. Ask them. Ask them. Ask them what? Well, make sure I get the, the link like on where to sign up and do that. And maybe I could be your first uh, example. And next time you do your little pitch, you could say, ask the clerk. <laughs> My name was on that list. There you go. But I am very appreciative. I want to thank uh, the different speakers. I want to also uh, thank uh, Seamus Kraft, the Executive Director of Open Government Foundation and Open Government Technologist Waldo J. Kweep. Is that right? Did I say that right? I know it's Waldo. Waldo's well, well, good enough. You guys know him. And I want to also say thank you to Dan O'Neill for hosting us this evening and for keeping this important conversation going. Um, I'm really, really honored to be with each and every one of you tonight. And Again, welcome to Chicago for those of you that are not from here, and I hope you enjoy your time in this wonderful, beautiful city. So I'm going to stick around for a little while. I also have staff that's here on hand, so if there's any questions that you want to get to me, you don't have to wait for Ask Them, although I encourage you to use it. But um, feel free to reach out to us at any time. We're always available. Thank you.